Christianity for the longest time has been the brunt of the joke for a lot of different entertainment mediums, whether that's comic books or movies. And today I have Odin with me from OMB Reviews, and I'm super stoked to talk about this with him because it does seem to be something that's happening more and more often. So uh, Odin, thank you again for being on the show, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me on. When I got the email, I was very excited because it is something that just doesn't get talked about a whole lot. And though it, it might get brought up in, in typically in joke fashion on, uh, you know, other shows that I do like Friday Night Tights, it is not something that I I feel like ever gets talked about as far as especially in relationship to pop culture. So I think it's a very important topic for us to be able to discuss today. Absolutely, man. W what kind of prompted this video and why I wanted to reach, reach out to you was because I was reading, I think it was like a Spawn comic the other day, and I noticed that I love the character Spawn. I think he's really well fleshed out, and I think it's a great concept, but I noticed that almost every villain in the book is some sort of insane cultist that happens to believe in more... Catholicism or, or a like kind of Catholic belief system or um, has those kind of disciplines or uh, maybe he's like a Christian preaching from the pulpit like those uh, kind of media television tele televangelist televangelist thank you mm -hmm. and you see that a lot where the villains are these like cult like leaders that hold these Christian values and I wanted to get your opinion on this and see if maybe you had an idea of like, do you think that it's kind of a, a willful ignorance that these writers write these characters like that? Or do you think it's more intentional? Um, so I'd love to get your take on that. Yeah, I, I think ultimately it, it, it to me always comes across as a twofold uh, answer. I think for one, it's that Christians are a very easy target. Uh, Christians are a group that you can make fun of and you don't have to worry about a lot of repercussions and, and a lot of that is because of just the very nature of christianity being rooted in the teachings of christ about love and forgiveness and mercy and so it makes sense that the group that's being made fun of is not likely going to respond in a, in a very negative way so i think that's a part of it is that there's a sense of an easy target and when you're trying to create i guess a character in in a comic or in any type of of even film too there's always i think this desire to create this larger than life personality and i feel that many times it's these 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 types of you know so sociopathic behavior right people who have power and so when people think historically oh who has held a lot of power for the longest time in in you know the history of the world well the church was going to come up in that right if you come up with a list of powerful uh, institutions throughout the entire history of the the entire world the church is going to come up several times as one of those big leaders so i think that's a part of it right and they recognize oh well we can make fun of them. They don't have to, you know, we don't have to worry about backlash from them uh, necessarily. You might have, you know, people boycott, but ultimately they also, I think, recognize that's probably not a big part of their fan base. Um, and the people that are part of their fan base are either very middle of the road Christians who don't get typically, you know, offended by that type of, uh, of representation or the people who they're making fun of aren't, aren't going to be reading or watching their content anyway. So I think that's a part of it is that it's a sense of there being an easy target uh, and it's very, it's a low effort target, I think, too, and also one that is low risk. They don't have to really worry about ticking off anybody. You're not going to have the Pope come out, for instance, and, uh, you know, you know, mention on Twitter that, oh, this person, this, 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 or mentioned in a speech, oh, this thing, this or this or this. Whereas in some other religions and some other groups, you might actually have to worry about that type of, of backlash, right, with the, especially the age of cancel culture that we live in. It's interesting mm -hmm. that the one group that does not really participate in as much cancel culture in the proper sense of the term is the group that is the most often, seemingly the most often, uh, that's being presented in this way. So, right, so yeah. part of it, I think, is just being a, an easy target in that way. But then I also think, kind of, what you're going to, you know, what you're saying with, you know, willful ignorance or, or whether it is something maybe more perversive. Well, I, I think that you can actually even go to the words of Christ Himself, where He says, "They will hate you. They will hate you because you follow Me. The world will hate you." Yeah. And so, I think that's another part of it as well. Is that 
you have the practical understanding, right, of, okay, power and, oh, easy target. But then I think you also have this understanding that, well, this is kind of what the, the church and what all Christians have essentially been been built for. We've been built for battle. And, and I think that sometimes that doesn't get talked about enough. I mean, you had articles just coming out this past uh, year, right, talking about people who have the rosary, right? Because you have uh, the rosary oh, that I was able to get to you. Right. And then yeah. I have the, the rosary on mine. And yeah, the rosary is being a sign of white supremacist far right ideology. Yeah, there were articles being posted about this. Yeah. And, and so you, you look to that and then you think to yourself, okay, there definitely seems to be this uh, this 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 understanding within many of the elites, not only just in, in media, but also I would argue that in in most institutions, right, people at the top. And I think that there's also this this almost nefarious nature to it as well. I think it's more of the practical stuff, as I mentioned, but I definitely also think that there are probably people who are like, especially these writers, it would not surprise me if the writer of that Spawn comic that you mentioned or of some of the other comics where you find it happen, I would not be surprised if one of the writers is a former Christian or went to a private mm. Christian school. And yeah. this is almost their way of, of responding back to some of the hardships that they may have had to go through or the things that they were taught that they didn't believe or that they rejected when they got to college and became their own person in a certain way. So yeah, I think those are probably the two main things as far as motivating factors as to why Christians can oftentimes be uh, portrayed in, in such a way. That's so interesting. I'd never actually heard that take of, you know, almost kind of getting back like, oh, now it's my turn to kind of, you know, I, I did the Catholic school, for, you know, I was I was put in private Christian school or whatever, but uh, didn't really believe it. And now it's my time to enact my, you know, ha my writing skill into this and put my, impart my part into this. So that's really interesting that you would that you would say that because I'd never thought of that. But I mean, I could absolutely see how writers would subconsciously put that mm -hmm. into their writing. Um, you the see it other in comedy thing, a lot, right? Yeah, you see it in comedy yeah. a lot where people will say, you know, oh yeah, I was a former altar server or I was this or I was that. And then they'll they'll turn it into a joke and then they'll make other jokes around it. And so it's absolutely this, this, this responsiveness, right? To yeah. the experience that they had. There's so many great points that you made. I think the first one that you talked about was essentially how if it is kind of something that is this willful willful ignorance, it's because it's a, a larger target and Christians won't really tend to respond. I know the first thing that comes to mind is what a lot of Christians will probably say is like, turn the other cheek. You know, it's a common phrase used within, you know, the faith is like, it's always just, oh, well, if, if someone hits you on this side of the face, turn the other cheek and allow them to do the same on the other side. But, but you brought up... Um, the verse where he Christ almost talks about how as you are persecuted like I am persecuted be almost not grateful but in a way understand that you will be persecuted because of the people who hate me will also hate you yeah, um, remember I think the world a, hated me first I think might be the um, more exact phrase but yeah it, it's absolutely it's, um, that I think I get hit even messed up but you know, that's the overall sentiment though is still there right that yeah that we are again we are not made for this world and so because of that this world is not going to to want us and yeah. and so we're gonna see and feel the sense of rejection and i think that we're seeing it in our in our movies and pop culture for my viewers out there if you guys have read marvel comics you guys know the purifiers which are essentially this cult-like a uh, Christian organization that wears these big crosses on their uniforms. They look like Templars and they purge the mutant scum from the earth. You know, there's one example. You also have uh, literally, <laughs> I kid you not, in X Factor number 17, the the right. The, the villain, the villainous group is literally just titled The Right. Uh, also, yeah, <laughs> really creative stuff. A little, a little stuff, on the nose right? there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's also kind of your point of having this large target. It's lazy. It's so lazy. It's like very lazy and 
um, it's a softball way of like writing in these villains of like, you know, I can't really think of anything. Let's just make him Christian cultists. You know, like it's just, yeah. it's becoming a trope now where it mm -hmm. is so recognized that it's, uh, it's frustrating. Now, on the other hand, like you said, this could be more intentional when you have those articles coming out specifically attacking those people, those groups and saying, if you are associated with this faith, you are also associated with far right ideology or, you know, whatever it is, um, which brings me back to those characters, like literally a, a, a villain called the right is a little bit on the nose, but you kind of have to ask yourself and try and get into the head of the writer and go, was this just because this is all you've known? Like, is this something that you've grown up just thinking that all Christians have this type of negative connotation to them? Or have you gone out of your way to kind of, like you said earlier, kind of get back at, at religion and being like, I hate what they're doing. And so this is my chance to write them as yeah. this enemy right you know i, I kind of would be interested actually to, to know more about the background of some of the writers because it wouldn't surprise me if they're like where they grew up um i don't know why but i feel that especially it, it's especially more true or at the very least it is much more of a um stereotype that the bible belt right mm -hmm. that if you're in the bible belt you tend to find more I guess you could say more fundamentalist understanding. So those that will actually read the words of St. Paul, especially with his comments about the submission of a wife to a husband, like people who will find that and and will, will take that in a much more literalistic fashion um, in certain regards. I would not be surprised if a lot of the writers that are coming up with these different stories came from that background because it's or or even just if it's from a very traditional catholic background too because it's it's something that is it, there's more there to push back from right i i wouldn't i don't think any of them would be from casual faith-based backgrounds or even just casual atheistic backgrounds because again they wouldn't have the experience they wouldn't be growing up with it they wouldn't be because again what do writers do they write what they know Mm -hmm. typically right they, they write what they know they write what they've experienced and so when you mention the purifiers i immediately were like oh yeah that's an easy target because mm -hmm. oh what we know everyone hates the crusades right that's right. a general <laughs> uh point in history that everyone agrees is is terrible even though if you actually looked into the actual history of the crusades you realize it's a lot more nuanced than that but it's interesting though that it's like yeah as soon as you see people with giant crosses on what do you think of the crusades oh the crusades are oftentimes viewed as being very bad and very corrupt and so therefore oh i can now use this experience that i have to understand the mindset of this villain group and so the writer in many ways is actually getting exactly what they want which is familiarity as well because what is more familiar in the world than the cross you, i think you had mentioned um before right there's over two billion christians in the world and so if you think about just audience base you're gonna at least have a handful of people reading comics that are christian so they're gonna be able to recognize that right away and say oh okay i get this and that's the other thing that i've noticed too is like you just you just mentioned comics must have a ton of readers that are Christian. I mean, like, most of the time when I've seen Christians portrayed in comic books, like, as these villainous or almost as, like, maybe a joke in some circumstances or some instances, um, I've always been kind of able to shrug it off and go, like, it's just another trope. And I turn the page and I go, yeah, yeah, I get it. But if the book is good, like I said, that Spawn book is so well written that it doesn't seem too gratuitous. It doesn't seem like it's overly trying to really push this, you know, but I noticed it. And so now uh, it's getting harder and harder for me to kind of shrug it off at this point because of how blatant it is and because of almost how like aggressively, you know, input into some of these things it is. So that's kind of why I wanted to have the conversation because initially being able to brush it off, you know, putting it aside and saying, eh, maybe it's just the own, the own bias of the writer. That's totally fine. I understand. But now it's becoming a little bit more intensive and a little bit more poignant as to like really going after this specific group. You know, I think back especially to when I used to watch The Walking Dead. I, I stopped after like a several seasons because eventually it just got very tedious. But there was a pastor character and the pastor character, when you first meet the person, turns out to be a coward who literally locked his congregation in 
and yeah. and abandon them from from what my memory serves I, I could you know totally have misremembered that but i'm pretty sure a big part of it was that he turned his back on his congregation to run away to save himself basically right and so that trope of yeah uh when a you know a person of faith is put into a situation where they have to make a decision that they chicken out is something that i do think you might see in uh, in media in a different in a couple different places and, and what's interesting though is kind of going back to my to my other point though is that um i think you even kind of mentioned it saying you noticed it in the comic and then you kind of brushed it off but again mm -hmm. that that's kind of just how we're built right we're, yeah. we're, we're built to you know when we get struck on one side to turn the other cheek when we're we're called to 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 you know to believe in 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 God's infinite mercy and love and and to to think of the best of others to the best of our ability and so it's one of those tricky things where talking about it bringing more attention to it is going to bring more eyes to it maybe bring some people to say oh actually I never thought about it that way but mm -hmm. I think it's still ultimately going to you know result in the same reason as to why they continue to do it which is because again that sense of an easy target that they don't have to really worry about um because also like we're not gonna one we're not gonna become violent about it for for one and then two we're also we're, we're not really a cancel culture group mentality so right. they don't have to worry about that either um yeah. and so it's it's like yeah well, why not why not make fun of them why not have there be our, our villains because what do we have to lose it's this weird cyclical thing where it's like, well, if we want to make fun of them, we can because they're not going to retaliate so we can just keep doing it. And even if they mention it, it's not like they're going to do anything so we can continue to like it's and it's yeah. just going to continue to be characterized that way. Um, and they can still point to the largest of these groups like the televangelists who they go, well, I saw this dude on TV and he's asking for money and he's telling people like all these lies and stuff. So I can point to him as the bastion of like, mm -hmm. this is what Christianity is, right? And not actually understand the nuances of like, the, the the disciplines of Christ are like meekness and, and compassion and understanding and, and patience and kindness and like mm -hmm. all these different things, um, not greed and pride and like what I think a lot of, you know, people see Christianity as through these yeah. um, kind of tinted uh, lenses. Yeah, well, one really, of the biggest uh, really like shows, one of the biggest shows too that, um, you know, that I just remembered and thought of that has this, this trope within it is I forget which season of, but it's uh, the show The Boys. Um, oh yeah. Because the character of Starlight um, right. is well known to be a a you know a Christian character, but you see her going through what a struggle with faith and a doubting of the faith. And there's also this moment where you see the guy who's like in charge of this faith event, and you find out that he's a scumbag and that he's corrupt and that he's um, again following those typical tropes it's easy to portray a faith leader as being a despicable person because again the media whenever the, you know the media loves to always talk about when people do bad things right bad news brings in all the ratings and so that's why when people oftentimes today think about the catholic church they think oh priest doing bad things with children right that's that's even though it's an incredibly small amount of priest Right. If we actually look to the numbers themselves and it's actually no different than what we would find in like a public school, for instance. Um, and, and so, again, you don't see them going after public school teachers. They don't see them going after any of these other groups where you find almost the same exact things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it is, I think, very much tied together um, with the way in which it's portrayed. Uh, fitting that which is being uh, presented to us in, in the media. Uh, we have been saying this a lot more recently that. It used to, you know, the old saying used to be that that uh, politics is downstream of, of culture. And I think now we can absolutely say that, no, politics is culture now in oh, many of these absolutely. different spaces. So that's such a and I, I would love to kind of end on that because that is like it's a perfect almost encapsulation of, of everything that we're we're talking about right now and um and and we've seen it you've of course seen it um with a lot of uh the topics that you guys discuss on friday night tights and just within media in general us as nerds probably never wanted to talk about politics or any of this stuff and it just it became that um and so i i find that so interesting um and that's a great great you know little way to kind of 
put a bow on this and and finish up. So uh, once again, man, I can't uh, thank you enough for your for your wisdom, your discernment, um, for uh, your your brotherhood here. Um, if you guys didn't know, this little guy here, I put this on my mic. Uh, this was given to me at the Dallas meetup from Odin. He actually made this rosary. Um, so if you guys go see Odin at any one of the meetups, um, go tell him a, a big thank you and give him a big hug. If you want a rosary as well, uh, I give them away. I make them yeah. and, and give them away. And uh, and so obviously if I, I try to make it to as many meetups as I can, but even if I, even if you are not able to make it to a meetup or if that's something not on your radar, uh, send me just an, an email, contact me and uh, I send them out to, I, I've sent the furthest one I've sent away, I sent one to New Zealand, uh, actually, wow. a couple of months ago. Um, one of my subscribers who had been sh going through a lot of different struggles uh, really, really felt like she needed to have uh, something to to look forward to, like just to know that it was on the way, like in addition to the rosary itself, like to know that it was also on the way. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's like I, yeah, I ship it away for free. So just contact me let me know and uh be happy to send one your way if you want one well shoot that is a an enticing offer um that is pretty cool man i love that a lot and uh yeah feel free to um to take him up on that because these things are actually super well made man so i was uh, i'm very glad to to have mine um but yeah, thank you again for, for being on the show. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. And we will see you in the part two of this, essentially. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it.